No, the way we kept this engagement with Trump, sir. Uh, excuse me, Doctor, what time shall I take the police? Seventh way, Marie. Yes, sir. I was wondering if you cared to spend the winter here. I've been asking for the doctor for the medical congress in Paris in December. Uh, Paris, France? Yes. Of course, Catherine could probably want to stay here alone, but I thought if you were here, you could help. <laughs> but help her how? Well, for instance, this evening while her company is here, perhaps you could persuade her during the conversation. Oh, Austin, of course you would do that. Last time I had a guest over, she disappeared into the pantry. The boss could have died. Oh. Well, I would try. And of course I would gladly stay the winter. Good. Now, if you'll excuse my dear, I must go with this. Oh, and uh, do help us to be clever, Virginia. You're good for nothing unless you're clever.
about this cousin? He's a distant cousin, it seems. Arthur's mother is always talking about branches of the family as if it were a royal house. Now Arthur, it appears, is on the royal line. Is his cousin Morris? He's not. Did he do anything before he made his tracks? I don't think so. I believe he had a very small inheritance. Uh, he lives with his sister in the second avenue. Who is she? Uh, Mrs. Montgomery, a widow. She has five of her own. Widow? With five children? Do you mean who is on her? I can hardly answer that, Arthur. But tell me, what do you think of Arthur? Arthur? I see him as the president of a bank at 50. Good! A small bank. Well, even so, Marion will like that. Uh, do you suppose that another Arthur in this great city about it? Well, Catherine will find a, a husband. She has the prospect of over thirty thousand dollars a year. I see that you appreciate it as a calculation. Oh, of course, I didn't mean it that way. We need not deceive each other, my dear. Austin, are you really as detached as you seem about Catherine? Detached? I wish I were. I see that you have no confidence, and I imagine Catherine sees it too. If you're approaching me, then you must be more specific. I've given her freedom wherever I could. The result is what you see. An entirely mediocre and defenseless creature without a shred of thought. Austin, you expect so much. Yes, I expect everything. There's no one so much grace and gaiety. This is her child. I expect that someday she make to me. Make what? Her mother's death. She killed her mother and being born. Oh, Austin. I've lived these years alone in loneliness with the captain to be all the beautiful things her mother was. I've concentrated my life on seeing how close to perfection of her mother. No child can compete this image you have for mother. You know, I do have that poor dead woman beyond all human brain. You are not entitled to say that. Only I know what else when she died. That was a long time ago, Austin. That is no consolation. Not that well of you, but 
What is it, Mr. Townsend, you must speak to me. It has been two weeks since I first met you. I am possessed by you. How could you be? Oh, my dear, you are everything I've ever heard for anyone. But Will you marry me, Catherine? Yes. Will you make me very happy? Do you love me? Yes, I, I love you. I will cherish you forever. Yes. We must speak to my father. I'll speak to him this evening. You must speak to him tomorrow. The young man you can raise up. Women are more tactful. They can persuade them. You must be prepared. After all, it is natural for your father to want Brilliant you back to him. I am a poor man, Captain. My father would not mind that. He may. He may feel that I'm a mercenary, that I only want your money. No. It is from your heavy money that our difficulties are likely to come. What? Are you very sure you love me? My oh, dearest, can you doubt it? I've only known it for five minutes, but how could I have never do that? Well, now there's something you must tell me. Even if your father forbids our marriage, you'll still be faithful to me, no matter what comes. Yes, sir. I'll always love you. I'll be back in the morning to call. Yes, at what time? At 11 sharp. I'll come. You'll be close to work? Yeah, my dear. When I want to be badly, I am always on the go. Ah, oh, God. I guess she is. Hmm. Yes, Father, may I speak to you privately? Yes. You have something to tell me, Father. I am engaged to be married. You have a right to tell me, and who you are with your choice. Mr. Moore, tell me. You have gone first. Yes, I, I think we have. Mr. Townsend ought to have waited and told me. But he needs to play tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. It's not quite the same thing, Catherine. Yes, Father, but I think he is a little crazy. He feels to have you been to mercenary. Mercenary? What an odd word for you to use, Catherine. He is a poor man, and I think that is very... Yes, there are many poor men, Captain, but they don't go to the street for pay. It must have been known as a cute. I'm trying to understand him. I, I love him. Well, I will see him tomorrow. I knew you would, Father. And you're so good that you'd be fair to all of him. I'll be as fair to all of him as he is with you. That is all we shall need. Thank you. Maria, deliver another moment. Yes, sir. It's for a Mrs. Montgomery, who lives in Second Avenue. See that it's delivered directly into her hand. Yes, sir. Yes. 
Of course, she marries a man I do not approve, I'll leave my heart to the clinic. But she has a good neck. Yes. That is the way they make money, though. It is. And consider how your brother dealt with money before. Did he help you, ma'am? No. No. I, I don't know, doctor. Mrs. Montgomery, tell my doctor the truth about your brother's motives. I don't know the truth about anyone's motives. I think he's a pitifully clear. He's in love with her money. You want me to tell her that? Yes. I won't. Am I to tell her that she's in love? As a doctor, I would not say that to any girl. Mrs. Montgomery, what am I to do? I don't know. But if you're so close to this marriage as a father, you must find a kind of way of stopping it. Good day, doctor. Good day, Mrs. Montgomery. <laughs> oh, was that Mrs. Montgomery? I want to look at you. Yes, Liz, she left. Did you like her, Austin? Very much. Oh, good. Captain has just told us Mary might be her maid of honor. She must get over it. He is worthless. What? You would not make Catherine see that. You will kill her if you deny her this marriage. Nonsense. You will. She passed the dreadful night. My dear, people will die of one dreadful night, even if dozen. Remember, I'm a physician. You being one has not prevented you from losing a member of your family. You may not prevent me even from losing society. I'm another. Oh! If this man likes her and he will take care of her and her money, what is lost? What assurances, however, that he will take good care of us? Catherine, Mr. Montgomery has left. We concluded our talk. I do not want to go. Are you afraid of a separation? I shall still love him when I come back. 
Very sure of your love, but Captain, you dare to test him. You underestimate him. I do not think so. Captain, go to you. Go to you. Very well. So 
short. For the last two years, she's been sanctioned for prison square. She always used to know that the phone would arrive. Oh, oh, 
Oh, no, Catherine, that is not true. He has grown greedier with you. The first time he wanted my money, and now he wants my love, too. He came to the wrong house twice, and I shall see he doesn't come to third. Oh, Catherine, do you know what you're doing? Yes. Poor Morris! If you've ever mentioned his name, you so much as a I shall see you wish to live alone. Catherine! I shall see you wish to live alone in Washington for forever. Catherine, could you be so cruel? Yes, Aunt. I can be very cruel. I was taught by masters. My dear, life can be very long for a woman alone, and I am twice her age. And even I, even the I. Night.